the best source of protein is a big juicy steak, right? Well, let's talk about that. Hey guys, welcome back to My Holistic Strength. My name is Sandro, and today we're talking about protein. This is actually a bit of a continuation of our previous discussions, uh, our last two videos, where we talked about vegan and vegetarian diets and some of the pros and cons that come with that. Also, in one of those videos, I mentioned that I personally am not a strict vegan. I eat small amounts of uh, poultry, fish, and eggs in order to get all my nutrients. One of those nutrients that I make sure to get with making that decision is protein. So we're gonna talk about today how you can get protein, what it is, and if you are a, a vegetarian or vegan, if you eat a meatless diet, what are some good sources of protein for you? Protein is extremely important for our bodies. Actually, it's interesting to note that the Greek derivative where the word protein comes from means of first importance. And that's really interesting when you think about what protein does for our body. Protein has often been called the building blocks of life. It can be likened to steel, bricks, and concrete that construction workers use to build a strong building. Protein builds muscle, repairs tissue, and helps maintain that as well. Protein makes up muscles, ligaments, tendons, organs, glands, hair, and nails along with being extremely important for bone growth. But pure protein is unusable by the body. It first needs to be broken down the intestines into something called an amino acid. Now, I'm gonna spare you the chemistry that comes with what that means, but just know that an amino acid are the compounds that make up the protein molecule. Amino acids are really the thing that we want to focus on since they're the most important for the body. Now there are 22 different types of amino acids, but we're not going to waste our time focusing on all of them because there are only nine essential amino acids. Now an essential amino acid is an amino acid that our body cannot produce on its own. The rest it can actually make on its own through different series of chemical processes. The other nine, we have to, and I mean absolutely have to, provide through our diet. Otherwise, no protein can be made at all. Protein is only as strong as its weakest link. All food has protein in it, even if just one or two amino acids. But there are some foods that seem to get special treatment or talked, out, talked about more than others. And these are your complete proteins. These are foods that have all nine of the essential amino acids. The most commonly known complete proteins are meat, poultry, fish, dairy products, and eggs. Some of the downsides of eating these sources of complete proteins is that they often provide too much protein for our body, which can complicate it. It can, be, it can put a lot of undue stress on the liver and kidneys. It can be hard for the kidneys to excrete it through the body, thus making urea and uric acid buildup, which can uh, accumulate in the joints and other organs, crystallize, and start forming symptoms of gout. Not to mention that digesting animal proteins can be extremely hard and taxing in the body, particularly if we're older in age. T. Colin Campbell, the professor of nutritional biochemistry at Cornell University, has been quoted as saying that excessive animal proteins is at the core of many chronic diseases. Animal proteins also have a very bad protein to fat ratio. Even though we may consider meat to be an exclusively protein food, it can often have just as much fat in it, in some cases even more fat than it does have protein. Take for example a slice of lean ham, which can have as little as only 25% protein and 75% fat. A cut of choice grade lean trimmed cooked sirloin can have 65% protein and 35% fat. That same cut, if it wasn't trimmed, would have only 24% protein and 76% fat. So red meat and dairy products is just too rich in bad fats to be seriously considered in any uh, diet focused toward nutrition or physical performance. Vegetable proteins have the advantage of having little to no cholesterol or saturated fats. They're also much less likely to be tampered with than animal proteins when it comes to hormones, antibiotics, or other chemicals. Most, but not all, vegetable proteins are considered incomplete proteins. 
What that means is that they do not have all nine of the essential amino acids necessary. So, like I mentioned in my last video, vegetarians or vegans or people who don't eat meat have to be skillful in combining these types of foods to complement each other. For example, brown rice, although being a fantastic food, lacks only one or two of the essential amino acids it needs to be considered a complete protein. Whereas certain beans and nuts actually have those missing essential amino acids. So when you bring those two uh, components together into a single meal, they complement each other and they actually provide the body with all nine essential amino acids. So then you can consider that meal as having a complete protein. As you can see, brown rice and beans is actually a fairly common combination that many people eat without even realizing that it's a complete protein. But it's not the only complete protein combination that we can make using meatless protein sources. Besides the rice and beans, there is also hummus with whole grain pita bread. There is spinach salad with almonds. You can also do a whole grain noodle with a peanut sauce or just a slice of whole grain bread with peanut butter or almond butter on top of it. As you can see, a lot of these are common foods that we may be eating already or is even culturally diverse and many cultures combine these incomplete proteins, maybe unknowingly, to provide complete proteins in their diets. Even though it can be both fun and creative to come up with different and interesting ways to combine different types of incomplete proteins in our diets to keep us interested but also make sure that we get our whole proteins, there are also other sources, unbeknownst to many, where we can get our whole proteins completely meatless. And they're just as good as the big five of meat, poultry, fish, dairy products, and eggs. These include quinoa, buckwheat, hemp and chia seed, spirulina, Ezekiel bread, potatoes, sweet potatoes, chickpeas, black beans, kidney beans, pumpkin seeds, cashews, cauliflowers, pistachios, turnip greens, and black-eyed peas. So you see, we're not limited to eating only meat if we want to make sure that we get our complete proteins. We can combine incomplete proteins, or we can go ahead and just use these sources, which surprisingly are fantastic sources of protein without the negative side effects of maybe having a high fat content. That's all for me today. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time. If you liked this video and you felt you got something out of it, maybe learned something new, go ahead and please leave a like and share with a friend. If you're new to the channel and would like to see more and get notified when I post a new video, go ahead and please subscribe to the channel. Did you know bee pollen is made from real bees? Well, not really. If you want to know what it's really made out of, go ahead and click my top video to find out more about bee pollen. But before I go, I'm actually going to share a little secret with you guys. I just read somewhere that if you wanted to break a habit, the first step is to stop procrastinating. So stop procrastinating already and click the video below. It's all about how to develop healthier habits today. Until next time.